Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Giacomo Serafini. I work within the DSL team here at Meteo Swiss. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, the previous speakers, for introducing uh, the important topics uh, that we deal with every day in our work. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk uh, a bit about Dusk and Dawn, these two softwares uh, we work on uh, at Meteo Swiss. Uh, we worked on Dawn for a while. Dusk is pretty new, um, and um, yeah, I would like to uh, credit Matthias Rotin, our colleague, who prepared all the uh, these slides and the uh, hands-on material for Dawn. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, let's jump into a bit of uh, the contents. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about the history of Dawn, um, and uh, then what we have been working on recently um, that is to make Dawn support uh, the partners that we found in the icon model um, and um, which is the, the model that Meteo Swiss is going to um, is willing to uh, support in the future um, and um, that is because uh, we need Dawn to support icon because um, this is like a new um, a new kind, it introduces new kind of patterns that uh, were not supported before by, by this compiler. Um, and then an overview of uh, the two tools, uh, Dusk and Dawn, Dusk being the front end. Um, and by front end, we mean both the language and the tool that will transform this language into uh, a format that is understood by Dawn. Um, and then we uh, will see a bit of um, examples, code examples written in Dusk uh, and explain uh, the features of the language. Um, and then uh, conclusions and uh, some questions. Uh, we will answer some questions. Uh, pointer now, okay. Uh, okay, um, well, Dawn is a, um, a compiler. Uh, it's a tool chain because um, we subdivided it into uh, different components, um, uh, but I mean the the aim of um, of Dawn is to uh, enable generation of high level DSL code. Um, we mainly focus on uh, weather uh, and climate, but we could say that uh, the DSL the domain that we can support is a bit broader. It's it can be categorized as geophysical fluid dynamics model models um, and um, what Don uh, does is basically taking this high level uh, DSL and uh, translating it into low level code that is can be C++, CUDA uh, and these low level codes needs to perform uh, well on a particular architecture or a set of architectures. Um, uh, a bit about, uh, about the history, uh, Don is uh, in development uh, since three years now. Um, initially, uh, as I was mentioning, it's um, mainly about finite differences on Cartesian grids. Um, and uh, this means that um, basically it's um, about expressing uh, a stencil. Uh, we'll see a bit in detail what I mean um, with Cartesian coordinates Rel um, relatively um, uh, relative Cartesian coordinates. Um, and this is because the initial uh, aim for Don was to uh, support the stencils that are in the uh, cosmodynamical core, um, which is the part of Cosmo that solves the dynamical equations. Um, and the language to express these, um, uh, these stencils, these codes uh, that came with Don um, is uh, called GTClang. Um, and this is a C++ embedded uh, front-end language uh, that, um, as I said, is uh, able to express um, finite differences on Cartesian grids. Uh, then um, when you uh, go from the front-end into the back-end, um, uh, you basically enter a Dawn um, and Dawn will apply some optimization steps, some optimization passes. Um, and then uh, at some point uh, you will get uh, generated code out of it uh, and you can choose whether you want um, some very simple C++ that is easy to read but it's not optimized uh, for any architecture and this is, will be for 
debugging, for example, or you can get very well optimized CUDA code that could run on a, a supercomputer, uh, or also grid tools, uh, which is another DSL, so you can um, plug into another uh, set of tools uh, and interoperate. Um, so again, in the, in the past, uh, Don was able to uh, translate the complete uh, DICOR of Cosmo. Uh, you will find advection schemes, diffusion schemes, solvers, uh, all supported by uh, the concepts that um, Don supports. Um, and here the two aims, of course, are, um, and as said before, you, you want readability, um, you want your code to, to look to be concise and therefore more, more easy to maintain, um, and also performance. Uh, so uh, this is important that uh, at least uh, you don't lose in performance, but you can also improve. Uh, with respect to previous uh, attempts. So here we can see a comparison uh, of uh, the translation of the uh, stencils uh, of the Cosmo Dicor um, uh, in Dawn versus uh, those uh, the same uh, attempt done in Stella, which uh, is a previous um, uh, DSL, um, DSL that existed before. Um, and if you download the slides, uh, you can also click on the link to uh, look at the paper if you're interested. Um, then uh, Cosmo is at the end of life. Uh, here at Meteo Suisse, we want to um, adapt ICON um, in the future. Um, and this uh, comes with um, the need to support a different kind of numerics uh, and a different kind of grid um, in our in our tool chain. Um, in particular, ICON um, employs uh, all kinds of numer numerical methods um, and it's it works on the icosahedral triangular mesh which i'll show uh, in the next slide um, but also uh, dawn is not only developed uh, at meta swiss um, there are also other institutions interested because it's open source software um, and uh, for example vulcan in the us is uh, developing um, is rewriting the FV3 model in, in DSL uh, using uh, the DOM compiler. And F, the FV3 model is finite volumes on, on a cube sphere. So uh, completely different um, completely different model, uh, but a lot of concepts are, are shared uh, and can be reused uh, not to do the, the same twi things twice. Um, then spend some words about the icon model um, it's uh, as i said uh, on the icosahedral uh, triangular mesh uh, it's a non-hydrostatic model of the atmosphere it's developed by uh, two german institutions mpi and dwd um, it's quite a large code base um, uh, 370 thousand lines uh, of photon and uh, as i said it employs different uh, numerical methods, uh, mainly finite volumes, um, uh, but also some finite differences and finite, finite elements. Um, so this clearly uh, requires um, uh, some consideration when designing uh, the domain specific language. Um, and also th this is the uh, icon mesh. Uh, as you can see, it's a global model. So uh, the mesh covers uh, the whole globe. Um, here you basically see one layer uh, of the um, special discretization. Uh, of course, the, the atmosphere you have to cons uh, consider more layers, more levels. Uh, so this, um, uh, say this uh, uh, discretization is replicated over the vertical, over the multiple vertical levels, um, and you can um, have multiple resolutions, of course. Uh, the meshing procedure uh, will cut the triangles in order to get a finer and a finer mesh. Uh, and um, as, uh, some, to give just some measures, for example, you can have a 13 kilometer, a kilometer global resolution. Um, we, and here by 13 kilometer, um, it's the uh, square root of the cell area of the triangle area. Um, and this would correspond to having a globally 
order of 10 to the 6 triangles. So um, this is a bit about um, what we uh, we what were the requirements uh, that uh, we we needed to face uh, when switching from uh, uh, Cartesian grids uh, to triangular meshes, for example. Um, and here you can see on the left, um, this code is uh, written considering that you uh, you work on a Cartesian grid, so you can use the Cartesian coordinates um relative to a center so all, all these codes are um are stencils meaning that you always compute on a um on, on a central point um and you um say fetch fetch your data from uh neighboring um locations um and here you can see the computation of a uh, laplacian of a discretized laplacian uh where you basically look at uh four of your uh, neighboring points um, and you evaluate uh, a field u uh, at those four points and at the center point uh, and the notation should be clear by ij we mean uh, the center point uh, i plus one uh, j we mean the point on the right i j plus one we mean the uh, point on top and, and so on um, so Another way to resent this is using a more uh, concise representation that does not um, uh, does make the Cartesian assumption. You can say that you have a central vertex uh, and uh, you are looking at your vertex neighbors, uh, your direct uh, adjacent uh, vertices, um, and you reduce, uh, in this case it's a sum query, uh, your field U um where your neighbors uh, and you store the result uh, on a field called uh, um so oops Next slide, yeah. um so clearly when you switch to uh triangular meshes or even unstructured meshes where you're you don't know maybe you don't know the uh, the exact number of neighbors uh, you don't know very well the mesh uh, it's not necessarily structured in the sense that it's it's the same everywhere um you lose the possibility to to write something like you had on the left um and uh, the representation on the right though uh it remains valid uh, because it assumes that you can look at the mesh uh, as a, a graph um, and express uh, connections uh, with this uh, chain syntax um, and again you would uh, to compute the Laplacian you would do the exact same thing except for the minus six here to account for a, a higher number of neighbors and uh, of course uh, it's not uh, always simple uh, you can have fields uh, in in icon that are not uh, on vertices uh, so they are quantities that are uh, local um, and they are uh, maybe sent uh, on on the circumcenter of a cell so cell fields or on the midpoint of an edge uh, so edge fields uh, and you can express all kinds of computations combining these uh, different uh, uh, types of locations. Um, and uh, we offer syntax to, to express, um, uh, again, connections in, uh, in the mesh uh, thought as a graph. Uh, and, and, to, and to say, uh, for example, which are the, the blue dots uh, in, that you want to uh, to use in your competition through this uh, chain of, uh, of location types uh, which i will explain in a bit so um, an overview uh, about the tool the different tools um, you have dusk which is the front end and again we uh, both mean the language uh, and uh, the tool that allows you to go from the language to uh, an intermediate representation uh, which is then understood by Dawn. Um, and let's go also in a bit more detail. So the uh, this representation we call a stencil intermediate representation, and it's a still high level um, in the sense that it does not contain 
uh, information collected about uh, any optimization is still closer to the um, to the code that is written by the domain scientist. Um, then this goes to uh, down opt, which is uh, the optimization tool. Uh, it will take uh, this SIR and uh, internally um, do some transformations. Uh, and the end result is uh, IIR, which is uh, stands for internal intermediate representation, which is then the the format uh, that contains all the inform all informations about uh, optimizations uh, th that you will need. Then this goes into uh, code generation. Um, here you can choose uh, which uh, uh, which backend you want to target, uh, whether it's C++, CUDA, uh, um, and they'll generate uh, code, human readable code, um, but low level code. So um, if you, your uh, code base is very large, um, probably it's not the best idea to, to look at these big codes, but if you to debug something, uh, this might be useful. And of course, this code needs to be then compiled uh, to, to binary. Um, then, OK, let's look at the Dask language. Um, so in Dask, you can um, define fields uh, that you then use in your computations. Uh, you can have fields on the location types that I mentioned before, edges, cells, vertices. Um, this means, uh, if you look on the right, uh, what would be the C++ equivalent of uh, of these uh, declarations? Uh, they will be multidimensional arrays. Um, so one value for each of the uh, vertical levels and for each of uh, the locations, in this case, edges. Um, and this value is a floating point, so either double or precision or single precision. Um, and um, yeah, well, the, we, we use uh, keywords to express it, so this is uh, symbolic uh, and it, it contains some semantic that you can use um, to uh, do some type checking, for example. Um, and um, also, it's useful for auditions. Um, so let's complicate things a bit. Um, say that you have to uh, store um, distances between uh, cell center to the uh, adjacent uh, edges, uh, adjacent to the to the cell, to each cell uh, of your domain, uh, and uh, therefore it's not enough to store uh, one value um, uh, per cell as before. Uh, you will to store three. This is because you are uh, you have three uh, neighboring edges to to a cell, uh, and therefore you will use this notation uh, to express uh, what we call a sparse field. Um, and this in C++ would correspond to adding uh, another dimension, um, which is which we call sparse dimension, and it's. Uh, um, and it's clear if you are on a triangular mesh that this is uh, always of size three. You can always have three edges for, for each cell. Um, then a slightly complicated one. Um, uh, it's this uh, interpolation coefficient field. Um, this is again a sparse field, but here you're not looking at your direct neighbors. Uh, we want to select these. Um, these six um, vertices, um, which are neighbors of this cell in red. Then uh, what we what we say is you go from the uh, initial cell, you look at the neighboring edges. From there, you look at the neighboring cells. Uh, and from there, you uh, collect all the vertices uh, that are adjacent. This set uh, is, uh, we call, uh, uh, you can call it uh, neighborhood, for example. Um, and um, it basically, this basically states, okay, for, for each cell, I want to have six. Um, I want to have uh, to store six values, one for each of the uh, vertices selected through this syntax. Um, okay, now another very important um, component of the language is the reduce uh, operation, the reduce uh, expression. Uh, so this allows you to 
basically reduce um, from uh, your neighborhood into the central location. Uh, what you will do is evaluate an expression. We call it right hand side um, at each of the um, at, at each of the neighbors of your neighborhood. Uh, and you define the neighborhood through a chain, uh, neighbor chain, as you have seen before. Uh, then you apply an operation uh, between uh, this expression, might, might be a sum uh, or a multiplication, uh, and have an initial value, uh, which usually for a sum is it's zero. Uh, but anyways, you can use any expression in here. Uh, so this is a simple example uh, in which you will compute an average. Uh, you have a, a field in uh, which is defined on edges um, and you want to store the average on cells but you want to uh, sum reduce um, and this is how you would write it in the DSL if you want to uh, understand it as a sequential code uh, you can look above at this code so this would correspond at iterating through all the K levels uh, then through, uh, within uh, one key level, um, it will iterate through all the cells. Uh, and for each of these cells, you look at the edge neighbors, uh, which are three for a triangular mesh. Um, and uh, then uh, this is how it will look like uh, in your pseudo code. Uh, you will need to access your uh, field uh, in uh, edge E. Uh, where E is the index over sparse iteration and your average uh, and uh, when you want to write you have, uh, you have to access your uh, average field at uh, cell C which is part of the dense uh, iteration. Uh, okay let's uh, it's another uh, element um, which uh, are weight vectors so sometimes it's not enough to have a, a symmetrical Presentation, a symmetrical stencil. Um, sometimes you want to distinguish between your neighbors and uh, apply uh, weights uh, in the in a reduction. Uh, an example is the uh, Laplacian that you have seen before in the previous uh, presentation. Um, so here the, the C is defined um, for each cell, so it's a field on cells. Um, and you want to compute uh, the gradient um, of C uh, on edges. So the gradient to uh, a field on edges. Um, so in the formula, you uh, what, what you see is that you have to access C uh, at uh, the first cell, um, which is near the edge, and at the second the, the second cell that is neighbor to the edge, uh, and subtract the two values. Um, and in order to do that, um, we came up with this syntax in which you can uh, apply a minus one uh, or a weight one. Um, and here you can put it, but in this particular case, it's minus one, uh, so that you would uh, actually get a, a subtraction. Um, you can subtract uh, values if you have a, a sum, uh, uh, sum reduce. Um, also, you can consume uh, sparse fields, uh, the ones that you saw that I presented before, uh, like the uh, interrelation coefficients uh, uh, that we defined before. Um, and by consuming here, um, we mean like using them like um, uh, like a weight vector, but that is not hard coded. Um, so your reduction here is defined on this neighborhood that you uh, that you saw before, um, and here what this means is that you would evaluate this expression, this multiplication, uh, at each of the of the vertices that are in blue, um, and therefore th this uh, this is a field on vertices. You, you access it at uh, uh, the current vertex, and this is. Uh, the interpolation coefficient, which is a sparse field, so you access it uh, at the central cell and the vertex, because here you have two dimensions to resolve. And you store the result uh, into, into a field which is clearly on cells. 
Uh, so the conclusions, um, well, uh, we are almost there uh, in uh, being able to translate icon stencils. Uh, there are a lot of patterns that we encountered uh, and uh, we needed to add support for them. Um, and um, yeah, our uh, aim is of course to uh, uh, have uh, very uh, concise stances in the number of lines of code. Um, the code is automatically um, for each of the uh, dense locations, so for each cell, for example, um, the computation is local uh, and you can easily parallelize that and this is expressed in the in the uh, high bar, the inter uh, internal intermediate representation um, and of course uh, we, we have a um, we are comparing um, uh, our rules uh, with uh, the existing code which is written in Fortran and there is an uh, open SEC uh, accelerated version of it um, which is written by um, the domain scientist, but it's also tuned for performance. Um, uh, but we uh, managed to translate one of the stencil and uh, we compare the, the performance against it. Uh, clearly the, the OpenSC version performs very well, um, but currently we are not there. Uh, as you can see, the one in the middle, um, is not as performant as the OpenSCC version, but we were able to manually optimize the same codes uh, using uh, mm, very simple uh, optimization rules uh, mm, applied blindly uh, without uh, to eat from a, um, from a human, let's say. Uh, and uh, this gets you uh, uh, a nice performance uh, and uh, an improvement with, with to the OpenACC version. And this is uh, our target to make uh, Dawn be able to uh, apply the same rules uh, and get to this uh, level of performance. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's most of the patterns that we found. There are also others which we still need to tackle, uh, upwinding, semi-Lagrangian, vections, uh, and so on. Um, and um, yes, this is our current uh, uh, aim. Um, and also maybe a note about uh, how Dawn is placed. As I mentioned before, this, is, this will be like the uh, revolution, uh, in, as Andy said, um, because you will need to rewrite uh, the existing code, which is important. You will need to rewrite in a completely different language uh, and uh, yeah, this is basically uh, how we see, uh, um, how, how we'll do uh, our transition to, to Icon. So thank you very much. So I think now the questions, uh, we can go through it. That, thanks, Giacomo, for, for, a, for a great talk. Um, very clear, I thought. Um, thanks. There, there are now outstanding questions. Does anyone have a, a question they'd like to ask now? Um, please, please type it in. Um, we're kind of dead on time, so uh, so, so we can we can move on um, if there aren't any. Okay, I, I I thought that really showed the kind of the power of the of the DSL approach. You know, the fact you don't have to show indices and uh, and it's very concise, high level notation. So I thought that was really useful. Um, okay, so we do have one question. Um, so people seem to like WARF. It's obviously well used. And the question is, is can we use Dawn to translate WARF codes? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with it, so maybe I can pass this question to Carlos. Yeah, okay, I can jump in here. Um, in principle, yes. Also, in principle, as Giacomo was showing, the first demonstration of Tom was done in Cosmo, and WORF is also a lat long type of grid. So many of the patterns are going to be supported. Many of the patterns are also common to many weather and climate models, like also the vertical solvers. Now, having said that, one should look into the particular computational pattern. Sometimes the particular model has some specific computations that lay out of the of the supported domain of this uh, of the D of this DSL. So once you look at it in, in, in the details and if there is something missing then it can be for sure implemented. 
so, yeah, so I think the answer is in, in theory, yes, uh, it, it is a regular structured code. So uh, as Carlos said, they, they've already tackled that in the past, so it should, it should be able to be translated. Um, second question, I, I don't know whether it's Jean or Jean, and I apologize, uh, whichever it is. Anyway, um, the question is, is how much time in terms of person months do you, um, would you expect to be able to have to write ICON entirely? Um, okay, this maybe is very subjective <laughs> estimate. Um, I think we could say, I could, I would say six person month. Carlos, uh, do you have a different estimate, Ben? Yeah, maybe I bet for a much um, higher number, but because at the moment we are focusing on the dynamical core, but in tight icon, there are a lot of parametrizations. Um, not sure if I recall, but the code base is 300,000, between 300,000 to a million, so it's, it's quite a lot, also depending on what parametrization. The model contains many models inside on itself, and radiation is already a model on itself. So I think it's quite, um, yeah, quite an, an ambitious task to to pour the entire model like like this one. Yeah, yeah my, my so I, I is go about the Dicor. Yeah, but the Dicor, yeah, well, absolutely, yeah, right. And for the Dicor, we could like this six months. For I the entire model from scratch, is is a multi, it's a multi-person, multi-year effort. Perhaps one thing to to say is that um, I, I think I'm right in saying, Carlos, that you're you're looking at um, being able to to translate parts of of the code at a time, so it, d it doesn't have to be the whole thing in one go. Is is that right? I, I think that's exactly. I think that's a strategy, right, to to replace some of the parts that are especially more time consuming or computationally consuming, and then integrate those into an existing model and learn on the go, and then do the transition that together with the domain scientists, the domain scientists are already exposed to this kind of PSL, and so do this integration smoothly, and we call the domain scientists. Yeah, so, what, so whilst it is revolution, it's not a, um, it, it can be kind of brought in Gradually, I think that's that's uh, one point to uh, to make. So it is it is a big effort, but um, but you know you don't have to stop everything and and then restart. Okay, thank yeah, you. Exactly. Also, one we have to remember that this model, that the models are moving right at the same time that we are porting them to new architectures and GPUs and, and and DSLs. The models are moving themselves, right? So we cannot stop the model development for a couple of years. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, there was one. Uh, well, I will take it. There's one follow-up question, um, and the question is: Is is there a lot of manual intervention required? Um, I guess that means in terms of the generated code, um, and how reliable is the automatically generated code? I see. I think I think we can we can evangelize here about uh, about reliability and uh, and correctness here, Carlos. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So in this approach, the aim is that there, there not, there's not going to be manual integration, but rather more a phase of learning um, on how to tune the DSL so that it produces exactly what, what you're expecting. But uh, in principle, the code generation is going to be quite complex. So we are not expecting in this case that the human is, the human is able to go into that code generation and fix it stuff or tune it to make it a little bit more or faster or, yeah, or, or very fine, for example. So the DSL should produce everything that the main scientists would need for a given architecture. Yeah, and I think um, in terms of re reliability, it, it, um, it, it should essentially be correct because um, it's generated from a, from a kind of a set language. Um, and, and obviously, if there ever is a bug in the, in the translation, then once that's found and fixed, that's fixed for all, all time. Um, so it, it's actually more reliable than, than manual written code, I would argue. So, um, well, I think we probably need to move on. Um, be, before